Well, welcome to uh, Take the Stage Actual Plays. Uh, tonight, we are super excited to play um, Vampire Cruise, um, which is an RPG that is written by um, Amanda Lee Frank. And all of that uh, information for how to, um, how, to, how to buy it, how to purchase it, um, how to contact uh, um, the creator and artist um, is all in our um, episode description. And so we're just going to open up here. Um, we, have our, um, we have our four player characters. And they um, have just embarked on a um, a maiden voyage of the um, top of the line luxury uh, cruise line, or cruise not cruise line, but cruise ship, uh, the Sea Star. And we're going to open up as they have uh, already boarded the ship in the morning. They've uh, stowed um, their belongings in their in their cabins. Um, so far, we haven't had anyone argue that they should be moved up to first class. Uh, um, everyone here is. Uh, is just in regular second or or, or third class cabin class, and uh, what was what happened upon um, entering this voyage is some names were drawn at random to be able to uh, sit at the captain's table at the at the lunch that welcomes all of the guests, and this lunch is uh, it's on the top deck it's 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 in the moonlight panorama bank, banquet hall, and so as um, as we as we move into this room this room is a large oval shape um, there's about um, probably about a hundred. 150, 200, uh, 200 guests that are that are in this uh, that are in this kind of a, um, inaugural lunch, so to speak, and the and the room is in an oval shape, and from um, from floor to ceiling, it's uh, it's it has curtains that are just blocking out all the sunlight, but up above is a um, kind of a, uh, is a fake um, starlight, like there's a moon that's on a track that's moving, and there's stars that kind of twinkle by the lights going in and out. And if you look really clearly, you can see that that's what's going on. But the effect is uh, um, the, uh, the, but this effect is kind of mesmerizing at first. You're like, is that real? Is that, I thought, I thought it's afternoon time. And like, if someone pokes their door, their head out the door, they can see it is bright and sunny outside. But once they pull this door close, it, it looks like you're sitting, um, um, sitting, having a meal underneath the stars. And so uh, these, uh, so we have crew, we have crew and, um, and passengers that are that are kind of sitting and eating together. Some um, some crew members are waiting on tables, um, but there is one very important uh, one very important table which has uh, the captain of the ship, and uh, that is with the you know, with the four individuals that you see here um, playing today. And so that um, that captain is Captain Bill Grip. Um, he is a man that looks like he's in his early sixties. He has kind of gray stringy hair that's uh, that's shoulder length, but it's uh, um, it's not full at all. So he has like a bald top, um, and uh, his um, his face is really uh, his face is really uh, white. It's you would um, you would think if he's a captain of a, of a cruise ship that he probably would be more tanned, but um, he he doesn't really look that way at all. He just looks uh, he almost looks cold, um, it, like in the way that his face looks. And um, he's sitting at the table, and um, he just has uh, he he has what um, what you've noticed. It, it just in this brief lunch, he's already on his third glass of whiskey. And uh, sitting next to him um, is a very handsome um, young man, probably in his uh, mid-20s, almost maybe almost 30. And um, and he is at the table. He's just kind of trying to make jokes with the captain. And the captain kind of, you know, laughs, you know, the, under his, kind of under his breath a little bit before he goes right back to his drink. Um, and then we have, um, um, we have uh, Roger Langston. You want to introduce Roger Langston, Seth? Uh, sure. So I'm playing Roger Langston. He's kind of a, um, <clears throat> he's the CEO of his father's uh, aeronautics company. So he's uh, very, very rich. And um, he's just kind of doing this on a lark. He's, he's you know, has everything in the world. So he's kind of searching for a good time and uh, a way to make his mark. And so he's just here for uh, adventure. Um, and seated to his right uh, is Annabelle Rustin. Hello, I am playing Annabelle. Annabelle is not anything like that. She unfortunately works in customer service at a minimum wage job, and this is her first vacation in eight years. <laughs> <laughs> and she just wants to relax. That's and, unfortunate. <laughs> and, That's my life. <laughs> and, Ste and Stephanie said Annabelle's 29, and then Roger's yeah. 53, right? Yeah, Annabelle yes. is 29. Okay. And then to the right of, uh, of Annabelle is um, Esteban. Hello, I am Esteban, a disheveled and poorly put together Latino male. 
was long ago stopped properly taking care of himself. Uh, he's wearing a trench coat right now that has definitely been worn uh, maybe for a few years. Um, it's over like a white button up that has begun to uh, yellow uh, during it. Uh, that has begun to yellow and has uh, quite a few wrinkles and stains uh, all around. Um, he is wearing some black pants that have, you know, once again, been well worn, very dusty. Um, he has a belt, but he has not unbuckled it. So like the belt ends are just kind of hanging off and his shoes are definitely in need of either being thrown in the trash or serious repair. And, uh, kind of has like an oily, uh, face of like a couple of, uh, zits here and there um kind of like a scattered facial hair uh doesn't look like it's ever been kempt uh for a while and kind of yellowing teeth and he's just kind of um if, is there like food in front of us oh yeah yeah there's yeah, uh, he, yeah there's lots of food he's still he's kind of like looking down and just picking at the food slowly and putting it in his mouth and chewing without chewing with his mouth open, making... <laughs> kind of sounds. Um, he's about 46 years old. All right. Um, and then sit, sit, uh, sitting, I don't know I don't know if you're right next to him now, or maybe you're a little bit away from him, <laughs> um, is uh, Orville um, Redenberger. Why don't you tell us about Orville, Adam? So Orville is a man from Southern Persuasion, and he is uh, a, a retired, uh, newly retired from the Archaeological Society. And so um, he will tell you about all the digs that he never went on um, and, and how his discoveries that didn't do anything um, were super important. And so uh, he's here to uh, enjoy his retirement. Awesome, and so the they uh, the the crew just uh, brings out plate after plate after plate uh, as much as you, you can eat. And this room um, smells like warm meat. And um, the, um, the captain eventually, uh, you know, they he keeps asking for more um, more drink. And one of the one of the waiters um, leans down and whispers something into his ear. And then so um, and then just very loudly he says, uh, uh, "Guess well." Welcome aboard, uh, the, the, uh, the no, the no, the sea star, the sea star. Um, I invite you, uh, this table, um, and any time you can, uh, you can visit the, you can, you can visit the, uh, um, the bridge and I can, I, I can show you the control room. Um, but to visit any time, um, do you, you, you are our steam guest. You, you have won the lottery and, uh, um, you, you deserve uh, all the special attention. He calls over the waiter and he says, "Get, get you know, get get them drinks." And then, uh, um, and then another man comes up and he's uh, um, he's very clean dressed and uh, he comes up and he's like, "Oh, oh no, um, you know, we we do have a bar, um, Captain, and um, um, we, we, they can go to the bar. Uh, we don't encourage guests to get um, get drunk in the afternoon on the on, you know so many activities on this ship and." Um, and then he turns to the table and um, and he says to each of you, he's like, um, "My name's Matthew. Um, I'm your your uh, um, your cabin attendant, and uh, I'm here to answer any questions that you have, and also um, explain some of the amenities that are here on the cruise." Well, I I forgot the question. Uh, is, is, is it always that's dark in this uh, in this boat? I don't uh, understand. Oh no no! The you can go up. Uh, you can go outside, and uh, we have the. You can walk around the deck. Um, we have lots of activities. But are we meant to eat in the dark? Uh, well, no. That's just uh, that's just the way that um, um, that's just the way that this, the the ambience was created in this room. Well, I would love to take you up on that offer to walk around, but I have a lot on my plate. Esteban looks down. And there's like nothing left on his plate. Never mind. <laughs> oh, I, I I see what you did there. That was a that was a pun, huh? That was that was a good one. Um, 
Is there any other questions I can answer? Alas, sir, would for sure take you up on your offer, the captain's offer of a drink. Uh, prefer- preferably something uh, southern, a bourbon, perhaps. Oh, oh yes, the bar, the the, uh, the bar definitely has that. The bar definitely has that. Is, it, is, uh, is there a quiet area where you can just sit in this on the ship particularly? Oh. Yes, yes. Uh, at, the, at the far end of the uh, the far end of the deck, we have the, we have the lounge. Uh, the lounge has a library in it. Um, it's um, yeah, um, it, it's it's very comfortable. That's where I'll be heading. <laughs> um, we we have a uh, um, um, we have a uh, um, we have a balloon that's tethered to one of the um, tethered to one of the funnels. You could. Uh, we're going to launch that balloon after 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 uh, after lunch. Uh, we have a, we have a, a we have a rock climbing wall. Um, we have a. Um, you can even ride in the tugboat. We have a tugboat that pulls uh, pulls anybody behind the behind the ship. Um, we, we we have lots of things. We have pools. Well, we have an axe throwing contest uh, tomorrow. We're going to have the ping pong tournament. That's always a popular popular one. Wait, right, oh, well, I, I, well, I say always popular. This this is the maiden voyage, but I was told that's going to be a popular event. Uh, I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? My brain was on cruise control. Oh, you're 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 a funny one. Okay, uh, which part did you want me to repeat? What was that? Oh, okay. Uh, who let this man on board? Is he, he's not even dressed for the occasion. I think he's been indulging before he got here, if you know what I'm saying. I'd have to agree. Well, sir, have you paid for your own ticket? Well, I won the ticket. You won the ticket, I see. And I get, like, a cross look at the captain, like, <laughs> this is the kind of riffraff you bring here. So to the captain... I was just like, I just wanted a quiet vacation. <laughs> so to the captain's left is... Uh, um, um, is the handsome gentleman, and he and he speaks up, and he's uh, he's like, um, "Hello, my name um, is Devin Swan. It is so nice to meet each one of you. Um, I, I would like to invite you uh, to, for donuts and coffee tonight um, in the lounge. Um, we will have a special presentation by the Life Society, and um, and you are all welcome." You broke up just a little bit by the what society? Uh, well, we, we are the life society. Ah, okay. And, Sorry, uh, my audio broke up really bad for a second. What, what is this life society? Oh, we teach uh, wellness, uh, wellness of the mind, wellness of the heart. Um, you know, you, in fact, uh, um, I first uh, discovered wellness on, uh, on one of my uh, wakeboarding trips to Tahiti. Um, it was amazing out there. Um, and in, in fact, uh, Mr. Mr. Esteban, I, I, you know, I think uh, relaying this story can really help you. Um, there's something about um, being washed over by the waves of the ocean that really uh, cleanses you, um, that uh, that purges, uh, purges out of you um, every uh, well every fallacy that you tell yourself. Um, but I would I can tell you more tonight. I. Just don't understand why you picked me out of everyone here. As you can see, I am definitely the life of the party. Uh, oh. I, I'm sorry. I, I no. I, I I'll go. I'll I'll definitely go. Very well. I, um, well, I, I do have another engagement. I hope to see you tonight. Very well. You will. All right. I was gonna go to the lounge anyway. <laughs> Um, so Matthew, um, his name's Matthew Ellsberger, is your attendant. And uh, so as, as the lunch is kind of wrapping up here, um, he says, uh, uh, well, um, being that you are the winners, uh, you still have my services for another hour or two. Um, where would you like to go? I will escort you. Well, b- before we do that, uh, Matthew, can you tell us who is that Mr. Swan fellow? Uh, is he the first mate or? Uh, no, he's a... Uh, um, and he looks over at the captain, um, and the captain's like kind of bleary eyed. He's like wiping his eye, you know. And uh, he's like, um, "There's lots of voices here. Um, you think we can go for a walk? We can walk along the deck. We can walk along the boardwalk." And there's yeah, lots of people. Well, there's lots of people outside. in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, 
Fine. Fine, yes. A constitutional sounds nice. I would like to get out of this room at the moment, yes. Are you guys going with him? Yeah. 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 I'm full. Okay. So when you uh so when you open the door, um you're just like blinded by the, you know, like, oh, you know, because it's <laughs> getting used to the actual sunlight that's outside. And then what you see is, uh, um, you know, what you see is like a very, uh, um, you guys are right in the middle of the ocean. And uh, you, you see that uh, it seems like everyone's having fun. Uh, the people have already left the lunch early. You see somebody that's up in the balloon launch, they call it. They're in a hot air balloon that's tethered to one of the stacks. And they're just like, whoa, whoa. And you, so the, it seems like this, cru- this cruise ship is half like Sandals Resort <laughs> and half like people that are of uh, older age and then somewhere in between uh, as, as far as the ages go. So you got some people treating this like this is spring break. And you have other people that are treating it like, um, well, you know, I should say it's probably the way that um, um, Adam's character treats it, <laughs> you know, like retiring, <laughs> you know, trying to you know take a relaxing time. And you also have people that are treating it like the way that Annabelle treats it as, I just want to rest, I want to get away. But you have your fair share of uh, quote unquote spring breakers. And so some of them are, you can see the, uh, you can see there's a rock climbing wall that is, uh, it looks like a, it looks like a Transylvania cat castle. That's the way the rock the that, that's the way this uh, rock wall looks, and you can see that from a distance. And there, the people climbing it are, um, you know, right now there's two twenty somethings, uh, males, heavily muscled, wearing really short shorts as they're climbing up. And when they get up to a certain height, they go yeah, and they just high five each other. And then they're uh, um, so th- bros. yeah, and so <laughs> uh, so you see you see some of that, and then you also see people that are uh, there's a there's a whole section that's a, a, like a lazy river. That kind of is uh, is perpendicular to the boardwalk. The boardwalk is all goes all the way around the top deck, and the lazy river kind of follows that. And so, um, so Matthew says to you, as, as you can see, uh, we, we 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 planned lots of activities. Uh, to, we want to make this uh, we want to make this the experience of a lifetime. Um, I will let you know um, that your room service uh, you can order anything you want, and we will do the best to uh, to get it to you. Um, any item, any food. Any uh, any any anything that you feel like you're lacking, um, just you know, you just give us a ring, and 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 uh, and, and and we'll try to uh, meet your needs. Matthew, I do have a quick question for you. Is that captain sound enough to drive this ship? Because he seemed a little plastered at lunch. Um. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think. Uh, I mean, he says you can visit him on the bridge. Um, but we and do, we, he didn't really, it was, it's not really forthcoming. And he kind of looks around now that you guys are out like alone. And he's like, uh, um, he's not the only captain. To, uh, he's really the deputy captain. Um, it, we are, you know, the actual captain is, uh, well, she only, she comes on duty at, at, at night. Um, that's, um, that's captain. Uh, um, well, I never actually met her. Her name is Verdelic, Captain Verdelic. Um, but she's uh, she's our actually uh, actual captain of record. Um, but but Captain Vilgrip was uh, he was the the captain of the Zenobia, which was an ice hauler um, that uh, um, that that he uh, that he he was in control of for many years. Um, but um, it, it's it since has uh, since was shipwrecked. Um, and in fact, we are we are standing on the Zenobia. Um, that's what the Sea Star was uh, uh, made after. It was, it was pulled up from the from the depths and uh, re- refitted to make this luxury uh, cruise ship. Um, and uh, I, I'll tell you a little, you know, I'll tell you a little secret. Um, you, you know, all, all they did, all at least this is all this is what I've heard. Um, I, I just uh, all they did was shorten the hallways and shorten the rooms. And um, if you go digging in the walls, uh, or uh, if you can fit yourself between uh, between the walls, you. You'll still find some wet wood and uh, and fish, and, um, and you, you'll see the bones of the Zenobia. And so, uh, so the Captain Vilgrip, I think they just, uh, well, uh, I'll, I'll take my hand at it. I think they threw him a bone. And he looks at you, Esteban, um, when, with giving him like uh, the daytime shift. Well, I'll tell you one thing. This. Uh... This boat does look like it's ship shape. Oh, well, if it's got fish in the walls, that might not be so true. Well, I think they're not alive. Uh, um, 
But Matthew, Matthew, my, my good sir, are you pulling our leg here? You're telling us that inside the walls of this ship is still the water and the wood and and dead the, fish? The, the dead fish of a whole nother ship. Well, I, well, I, if you're really quiet at night, I think the I think the rats have eaten most of the fi- most of the fish. Um, but you, 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 I mean, it's not the it's just wet wood. It's not like there's water behind the wall. It's more damp than anything. Um, but that's damp wood and a deputy captain that looks like he came on a rocking horse picture show. Yeah, but you okay. can't. But look around you, and you, as you, as you, even the room that you're in, and the, and your own rooms that you dropped your stuff off of, and walked around the ship, it it looks like a premier cruise ship. It looks, uh, it looks pretty fantastic. Um, and he goes, uh, but Roger, uh, I believe you asked me about um, Mr. Swan. Yes, that's right. Um, yeah. So they, they, uh, well, what I heard again, this is what I heard. We're friends here, right? I mean. Sure. Well, certainly. Yeah. Uh, well, this is what I heard um, that the you know the the two owners of the ship, um, who I've never met either, hmm. Uh, any, um, the two owners of the ship, they uh, um, they uh, I guess they couldn't sell all the tickets, and so they had to give some away, and so they gave it to the members of the Life Society. Now, Matthew, why are you telling us all this? Um, I don't know. How long have you worked on the Sea Star? Uh, well, this is its maiden voyage, so it just. Well, how long have you worked with? Uh, I suppose uh, the captain, uh, Grip. Uh, I just met him uh, a couple days ago. <laughs> Green crew, wet wood, rats, and Rocky Horror Picture Show. I'm going to the lounge. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, before you go, um, um, honestly. I had a lot to drink before I came on my shift, if I'm going to be perfectly honest. Uh, you see the, um, and, and you can see now that if you look at his eyes, they're kind of red. <laughs> and uh, he says, you know, the I thought this job was going to be something more than it was, and it's totally not. And now I'm stuck here in the middle of the ocean. Um, fortunately, the, the champagne cellar, um, no one, uh, it's unlocked and no one can find the key to lock it. So uh, that's pretty much the only way that I've survived. Uh, but um, hey, friends, uh, we're having a party tonight, and I'm inviting you. Um, it's between the decks, between the decks, uh, right, right in the right in the crew quarters. And I tell you, below our floor, I don't know how to get there. Um, but there's a, we're gonna have our own party. But there's a party that seems to be happening down below. I don't know how to get down there, but um, they, it sounds like they have some, they have a bitch and dis, a, bit, uh, um, a bitch and DJ. Um, but we're gonna drink some champagne later and. Uh, you know, we'll just hang out. And he kind of points at you guys all awkwardly. Mm-hmm. What time is that taking place? Oh, uh, 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 nighttime. Maybe like nine, ten. I don't know. Well, I was invited to go to the lecture of the Life Society. Is it before or after that? Oh, it's after that. It's after that. Okay. I'm, I'm not really one for parties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm not sure I'm ready to get down and party with the crew. Well, it's uh, only going to be me and uh, maybe about four or five others. It's not going to be the whole crew. I, I'm just telling you because you're my, you're my, you're my new friends. Oh yes, yes. Well, we'll see what we can do. I'd be happy to meet you down there, Matthew. Uh, I'll be there at nine o'clock. Oh, that, excellent. He kind of, and he's like, uh, um, how old are you? Uh, me? Yeah. How old would you guess? I, I don't know. Uh, you're just your skin's so tan. <laughs> I spend a lot of time in the sun. Uh, very active. Yes. Huh. Uh, so what would you guess? Tell me. Oh, oh, you really? I won't. Wa- I, won't I won't take offense. Oh, you are really want to know? Oh. Yes. Yes, uh, please. Uh, and he seems all nervous. He's kind of sweating. <laughs> he's like almost like he's afraid to like, give the answer. And he's like, um. 60? <laughs> and his face just like sours, just falls. Oh, um, 53, actually. Oh, um, okay. Well, I'm going to just, I'm going to, you know, um, I'm going to stand back. Um, I'll be here for questions. Uh, uh, this detail gives me two hours of really not having to do all the cleaning work. So um, I'll, just, I'll just stand here. 
Well, uh, Mr. Roger, I, I would say you best bet would be try to head to the hot air balloon. Because at least then there'd be two things of hot air there. I, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> well, I'm going to go to the back of the ship. So can you stop giving me that stern look? <laughs> Who, me? I wasn't giving anybody a stern look. I'm here to have a good time, my man. Listen, Before you... <laughs> listen, those those shoes of yours, I have a replacement. I can get my man Hugh to come and uh, replace those shoes. They're looking really terrible. You're on, you're, you're on a five-star cruise here. You should look the bar. I feel like I've just entered a class war. <laughs> <laughs> no, um... As you're like uh, saying that about his shoes, he's already started walking towards the back of the ship. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have uh, we have animals going to the lounge. Yeah, she's out. Okay, and then we <laughs> have way too weird for her. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about uh, Orville? What's he doing? Uh, I think I'm going to check out that hot air balloon. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, we know uh, Esteban. You said you're walking to the back of the ship. Yeah. Okay, and then um, Roger, what were you doing? Uh, now, Dr. Wittenberger, would you mind if I... Jo- uh, I'm just talking like you. Would you mind if I joined you? For that <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for someone to kind of start talking like this. Exactly. That's wrong. Uh, I would love your company, young man. Oh, very well, yes. And you don't look an age over over 45. <laughs> he slaps you on the back hard. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Annabelle's just like I am so gone. Walks away quickly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, um, out it, so it, so it's you know, so it's really sunny and all of that. But like that, like it happens sometimes in the ocean uh, with it, with the right gust of wind, um, um, clouds blow in and start covering uh, start covering the sunlight. Um, it's about uh, it's, it's about three or four in the afternoon. Um, we'll say this is the time of year that the it's probably about an hour of sunlight left. And um, let's start with Annabelle. Annabelle, you uh, you go down into the lounge. Um, it, it's yes. a, well, it, well, it's a door that's uh, it, it's a door that connects to um, the top deck. So it just has like a short, like uh, you know, like a four flight of st- you know four steps down. So um, and this is uh, it, um, it's fully carpeted. Um, there are leather bound books that surround like one like uh, so so picture the room is like a long rectangle. And then on one end of the room, uh, um, there's books that cover like half of that whole rectangle, like one whole corner. Um, and then on your side, where you walk down, it's a, that it's this is the lounge part. Is uh, you have like a, you know knee high, you know, well, I mean thigh high, like circular tables uh, um, with comfortable like lounge seating. Um, there's there's some people that are reading. Um, there doesn't appear to be that many people in here. Maybe like less than ten people. Probably not the happening spot during uh, you know um, during the daylight hours, um, but yeah, you see um, you see lots of leather bound books, and uh, you see a um, middle aged lady with a um, with a younger girl looks to be probably a teenager um, sitting over um, um, sitting over closer to one of the bookshelves, and then um, you see a, uh, you see about two or three other passengers that uh, one is reading a book and it's uh, they're very clearly have fallen asleep. Um, and the other two are having a conversation that's a very mild, like a muted conversation off in the corner. Um, they look to be a couple, a man and a woman. Like the... Okay. Well, her first order of business is to find herself a seat because she really just wanted somewhere quiet where she could relax and get away from craziness because, I mean, that's what she deals with every day. Uh-huh. <laughs> so she would find herself a nice, comfortable seat and she'd actually pull out her knitting. Okay. Because that's what she had intended to do in the first place. Gotcha. <laughs> so while you're knitting, uh, um, are you eavesdropping? Are you uh, trying to tune everyone out? Are you? Um, what's your mode it's, while you knit? It's more of a tune everybody out, and she probably loses track of time because okay. it's easy to do when you're tuning everybody out. Okay. Um, so yeah. So uh, we will leave Animal down there as she is uh, knitting for. We'll see how long. <laughs> um, and then let's see. we'll go back up to the top where we have the um, um, where we have our two uh, guests that are visiting the hot, the hot air balloon. 
So there is a, uh, to get to the hot air balloon, uh, the, the hot air balloon, when it disembarks the passengers, there's this little platform that's been attached to uh, one of the um, funnels. And to get up to there, you have to climb a rope ladder to get up to the top. And then um, once you get on the platform, they can load you up in the hot air balloon and they take you up. And the hot air balloon is attached on it by a string. So it's not like free floating off anywhere. You're muted, um, Seth. You gonna be okay climbing up this uh, rope ladder, old timer? Oh yeah, I was an archaeologist, man. I used to travel the world. I might take a little liquid courage, and I'm gonna screw the top off my cane and take a little sip of my nice my whiskey. I see. Now, what do you have in there? Uh, it's a little, little, little whiskey that my uh, my uh, my grandmother batches up. Uh, would you like to try some, sir? Ah, yes. Good show. Yeah. Uh, think it. <laughs> Yes, it's uh, it's stronger than what you can buy in the store. It's not technically legal anymore, but uh, <laughs> still uh, beautiful, beautiful. Yes, still, tasty, uh, tasty. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> all right. So let's let's go up this rope ladder then. Sir. Yes, after you, after you, please. Oh, oh, okay. So as he uh, um, as he climbs the rope ladder, um, um, Roger. Uh, all of a sudden, there's a there's a um, a very attractive woman standing next to you and she didn't seem like she was there before and now that now she's standing right next to you and then she's like uh um well hello what's uh what's your name oh my well uh, hello there young lady uh my name is uh mr langston mr roger langston and uh your name so she appears to be uh kind of an indeterminate age you can't say she looks she could be mid 30 she could be mid 40 she could be a very uh very well to do attractive 50s you don't really know um and she's in a uh, it's almost like she's in a like um in one of those pencil skirt like business type wear um black she has a white blouse um she has blonde hair that she's like you know kind of uh, pulled back into a pony now and then and she puts out her hand um and she says uh, um my name is Svetlana what is your name Svetlana, yes, uh, Roger, as I told you. Well, would you care to join me and my friend? We are about to uh, embark on your hot air balloon. Would you care to join us? Um, I think I think I'll watch. And she kind of gives you like a flirty look. Huh. Well, uh, whatever tickles your fancy there, Svetlana. Um, I was going to... Um... You know, life is short. and I, I, I was going to be coy. and um... But how about a drink later? Well, uh, that's very forward. Uh, <laughs> uh, sure, yeah, yes, uh, in, at the at the bar somewhere, I suppose. Um, yes, yeah, the bar will do. Ah, in fact, uh, there's a party I'm going to a little bit later uh, with with some of the crew of the of the ship. Uh, perhaps you could come with me there. Uh, well, let's see how the drink goes. Oh, very well. Well, what time should I meet you? Uh, a- after dark would be preferable. After dark, I see. Um, she kind of she kind of looks up, and then uh, um, she's like, uh, "Must be going." And then she uh, scoots off, and then just at that moment, the clouds pass, and then the sun comes out. Oh, oh hi! I'll <laughs> climb up the rope. <laughs> All right. Um, so you're getting action on the first day of the cruise. <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> so when you guys are when you guys are up at the top, there's a there's a he looks to only be twenty one, twenty two. Okay. Um, he is there at the top, uh, basically like ready to load you guys up on the balloon. Wait, wait, wait! I, yeah. I, I got something. I guess Roger's about to have his own maiden voyage. Ba-dum, 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 ba-dum. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Are you still with us? He sees that he sees that from a distance and he says that to himself. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, 21, 22 year old Tony, who's, uh, who's the hot air balloon operator, he says, uh, Yeah, welcome, guest. Step right in. You guys can both go. Oh, okay. Uh, you're sure this thing is uh, safe, right? No, <laughs> not at all. 
<laughs> you better. Her on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, old man. It's all right. You're not living uh, today. You're not living at all, right? I suppose I'm already retired, so it's okay. You've led a long, healthy life. I'm sure everything will be fine. Yeah. Well, Roger better hope he not dies, otherwise he's not going on a date. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, Tony, do you know uh, a Svetlana, a very attractive uh, blonde woman? Uh, th there's lots of attractive blonde women on the ship, you know what I'm saying. Yes, but this one is named Svetlana. I don't think I've met her. <coughs> I've never, uh, I, you know, bro, I don't, honestly, I don't really remember their names. I see. Do you know Matthew? Uh, no. Okay, what you do is you get in the thing, you get in the the, the, the cage, and I'm going to, and he pulls out a machete, and he goes, and then I chop this rope, and that thing just goes, whoo. You chop the rope. Well, yeah, this then he tugs the rope and it's like the, the balloon moves just a little bit. He says, this is what's holding it down right now, man. When you get up and, there, and, you can you can fiddle with the, the, the knobs and it'll go up and down. And how long have you uh, been a balloonist, sir? Uh, well, I got the job a week ago. They gave me the training. Uh, I see, I see. And, and how do we get down when we're done? You just turn the knobs. Uh, you'll figure it out. One way goes down, one way goes up. Oh, I'm glad I went to the lounge. I'll be fine, I, doctor. I, I see. <laughs> hmm. All right. So I'm glad I uh, took. Uh, I filled up my cane this morning. <laughs> so you guys. Well, <laughs> well, once, once to the fortune. Let's go, sir. Uh, very well. You're not having second thoughts, are you? Uh, and third and fourth, but I'm still, I'm still game. <laughs> very well. Let's go. So he uh, he shuts the little cage and he goes, make sure it's closed. And he goes, all right, ready? One, two, and he chops it before he gets the three. And then the balloon, uh, uh, he, he thought it was going to be this shooting up effect. And it actually doesn't do anything. It slowly floats this way. <laughs> <laughs> now, are we still tethered to the boat? Uh, you're tethered to the boat, but now you have now you have the ability to, to move the balloon. But you won't okay. be able to get away from the boat. But Right, yeah. right. Um, and as you guys are doing that, we'll move over to um, Esteban. Esteban, uh, walking uh, several places behind you with his hands behind his back is Matthew, because mm -hmm. uh, Matthew has been tasked to look after you four to answer any questions. Yeah. And so he just stays within earshot. Um, and he, as you walk, he slowly mm -hmm. walks behind you. So he is the one that told us about like the ship uh, rumor that it brought, got brought up from the sea and it's just yeah. kind of like plastered everything. Yeah. Right, I'm going to look uh, back with him. It's like, you don't need to walk behind me. Come on, walk beside me. Oh, oh, here you are. And he kind of skips forward. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was a bit surprised about the story you told us. I'm uh, about the ship being dragged up from the ocean. I'm kind of surprised it didn't come with a skeleton crew. Because it seems you guys are well staffed. Um, I, I think you're... <laughs> I think you're at one of your jokes again, but I actually don't know what a what a skeleton crew is. Oh, kind I, of I like, just is it like the Pirates of the Caribbean, like where they have the the pirates? You remember the one no, where they modern modern words slang things used skeleton crew would mean short staff. Oh, okay. Any 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 kind of just kind of looks at Matthew while still walking forward. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, we have other activities. Um, um, I, I see your friends are visiting the, you know, the off, the offshore athletic club. And now you can see there's a, there's a, like a, like a lit neon sign that says offshore athletic club. And that's where the rock climbing wall is, the hot air balloon, um, uh, the, and the entrance to the lazy river, um, basically anything that's uh, physical. There's a, there's a, um, there's a ping pong table that's set up that two people are look like they're you know like they're battling in the olympics that's how fast they're playing right now um oh. <laughs> um but uh yeah and so um but matthew says to you he's like uh but you know there's there's uh there's a concert hall like you know there's a uh um what is the i don't know why they named it this this long it's a long name it's a starlight nightclub and gift shop games and axe throwing Mouthful, but lots to do. Well, Matthew, I'll leave it up to you. I'm not much of a 
motivated person, so why don't mm-hmm. you decide for us and we can do something together? Well, let's go to the let's go to the bridge. The captain said he'd be at the bridge. You want to see the bridge? <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, that would be fine. Okay, so he takes you to the bridge. Um, the bridge is in the. Um, you actually have to go back to the um, to right outside of the banquet hall that you're in, and you climb up some climb up some steps to get up to the um, to get up to the top, which is the door to the bridge. It's in the very front okay. of the ship. So we basically did kind of like a U-turn and then went up there. Well, he was t- as he was telling you these d- different places. I would like to think you guys just made a trek around the boardwalk. You know, oh, as okay. you kind of went around describing what's here on this top deck. So. All right. Um, and then when he takes you to the, um, so you guys op- open the bridge and there's two, uh, there's two crewmen that are, uh, they're dressed in like sailors outfits, like, um, um, like uniform, like as if they're part of the Navy, mm-hmm. um, but they're totally not part of the Navy, but that's what, that's what their uniform is. And then, uh, Matthew says, um, you know, I've brought an esteemed guest, uh, here to see the captain. He said to meet him on the bridge. And then the two, uh, sailors look and they go, no, the captain's not here. And then you can see, uh, you can see on the, uh, you can see that this, that this bridge is like, uh, it's state of the art. It's like gleaming, it's up to date, uh, it's, it's very clean. Um, But the, as you look closely, you can see the crew has taken to attaching these little pieces of paper. Like one of them says in all caps, it says brakes. And then there's another one that says, uh, the um, engine room says all caps, never press this again. And so they have these like, they're tack they're tacking on to these um they're tacking on these uh, it, it, it st- kind of seems like that they are inexperienced at like sailing a boat and that they're just kind of figuring it out as they go along i'm not like <laughs> yeah. saying that in person but um you said yeah. it's all clean though right yeah except the the one thing on the far end of the um of the bridge cabin is an uh, is an old style wooden um st- like a um oh, what do you call it a, a ship's wheel like a ship's yeah. wheel and then uh, you can tell that it's not connected to to actually control the ship. The actual controls are on the new, the hardware they have. Um, but you can uh, in a little pl- like a little metal plaque they've ta- they've uh, I kind of engraved or set into the wheel. It says uh, Zenobia, so it's the original wheel of the Zenobia ice uh, hauler. That's actually kind of cool. Like that would be kind of fun to see on a on a ship. But um, Esteban's going to take note of how clean this place is. And uh, for a place with so much semen in it, it's really clean in here. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Matthew gets that one, and he kind of laughs a little bit, (laughs) and he backs out. (laughs) Um, Down in the, down in the, uh, skipping back down in the lounge, um, uh, Stephanie, go ahead and roll a um, roll a ten set of dice. Okay. Oh my god. I uh, I got a nine. You got a nine. Okay. Um, you have this feeling that someone, even though you're trying to ignore everybody, that someone is staring at you. Lovely. I would look around to see if I could figure out who is staring at me. Um. I'm not a fan of being stared at. <laughs> so um, it's the there's a, a woman that's talking to that uh, teenager mm-hmm. in the corner, and then so uh, um, she's uh, she's kind of staring at you. Then when she when you meet her eyes, she looks away and directs her attention back onto the teenager. Can I help you? Um, you might. I'm sorry. Am I am I bothering you? Uh, no. It's Wait, fine. I just noticed you're knitting. Uh, yes. Um, it, it's it's fantastic. Thank you. That's very sweet. <laughs> I mean, really, it is. I mean, I was just uh, um, I was just talking to uh, you know, my young friend here, um, um, Kate. Do you come come here, dear? And so they kind of scoot over a little more to you. Um, and then Kate uh, Kate has like a, one of those uh, very clearly is an art book, like a sketchbook that she's holding on to. Okay. And then she's like, uh, well, um, um, this is Kate. And uh, uh, my name is Caroline. 
And um, I like to think that I just have an eye for uh, the artistic. And you uh, have you ever um, sold one of the, one of yours, your work? Oh, no. Most of the time, people aren't willing to pay the labor that goes into knitting something. So I just knit for friends and family and for myself. Well, it looks it looks wonderful. Uh, Kate, Kate, show her some of your show her some of your your pictures. And then Kate seems very shy, and she's like, um, yeah, "Caroline, are, are we gonna go look for uh, Aunt Aunt Francie?" And then uh, and then Caroline's like, "I'm sure she's fine, dear." I, I, and, and then she's like, "I ha-, and then uh, Kate's like, "I haven't I haven't seen her since uh, since after uh, after we've unpacked." And then, um, and then, so Caroline says, uh, "It's okay, dear. Just show the um, what was your name again?" Annabelle. Uh, show Annabelle your your drawing, uh, one artist to another. And so she uh, opens up her um, drawings, and they're they're really good. She's, I mean, they're all horses, but they're all, you know, pretty anatomically like, correct. <laughs> she's like, these look very nice. I can see that you like horses. Have you ever ridden a horse before? And then she's like... I'm assuming this is, like, a younger teenager. She's, like, 15. Yeah, she's a kid. <laughs> yeah. She's like, well, that might be something you want to look into someday. It's a lot of fun. I did it when I was a kid. I went to an equestrian camp. And so uh, um, um, Kate's like, um, I, well, um, Caroline, can can I go home now? I'm going to go look for Anne Francie. And then she's like... Oh dear, oh dear, just stay, stay for just a little while. Um, it's almost night. How about we go when it's night? And she's like, kind of, you know, listening to the adult basically, and sits back down. So. Annabelle thinks this adult is very weird. <laughs> she's gonna be like, "Are you? Did you lose a member of your group?" Uh, well, no, Aunt Aunt Aunt, Fr- um, Aunt Francie. I just I haven't seen her. It's. I swear she disappeared. I, I don't know. Well, it's a big ship. She may have just gotten distracted with ping pong or axe throwing or maybe the hot air balloon. Maybe. But if you don't find her by dinner time, I'm sure that somebody on the ship would be able to find her for you. That's true. Thank you. No problem. I mean, it is their job to keep track of this. All right, and then let's uh, just scan back up to the um, to the older gentleman. So, uh, you tell me if you're just riding the hot air balloon for a while, or oh yeah. So, uh, Mr. Langston, uh, who was that young filly with her trotting harness on? <laughs> <laughs> well, her name was uh, Svetlana. Quite uh, exotic, if you ask me. Svetlana, yes, yeah, sounds sounds uh, lightly. Uh, Eastern European block. Uh, my thoughts exactly, yes. Uh, maybe she's from Croatia. Uh, yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, well, uh, looks like she had your eye. Yes, uh, she uh, invited me to a date later. You find a that strange? date? <laughs> Something like that. I thought she was a bit out of my range, but, uh, well, she seemed quite insistent on it. Well, you are living high on the cotton. Maybe she knows that you're a man of means. That's true. I've always got to uh, keep an eye out for that. That's a good point. <laughs> I ain't saying she's a gold digger. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dr. Orville, well, where have you come from? Well, you said you were an archaeologist, yes? Well, I, I've been all over the world. I mean, I grew up in, in, in Virginia and, uh, you know, made my living uh, traveling the world and looking for uh, fun little artifacts and, and things like that. I see. So you were uh, Indiana Jones. <laughs> yes, uh, without the women or the whip. Please <laughs> is honest. Well, uh, what do you say? Uh, how do we get down here? I mean, I mean not much to see. I, I'm going to kind of scan just around the boat and just kind of like, I don't it's know. It's the ocean. Yeah, I mean. it's You can see in all directions. It's still the ocean. <laughs> is there yeah. anything uh, notable about the boat? Um, no, from the outside, it looks like a, uh, like a luxury cruise liner. Um, what did you mean? Oh, sorry. Just from, from above, you can see the top, top of the rock climbing wall that it's a, uh, from the front, it looks like a Transylvanian castle, but now that you're on the backside, it's just 
fiberglass, <laughs> you know, uh, from the other side, you know. Um, and yeah. that, that's that's one of the higher structures besides the funnels is the rock climbing wall. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, you just see kind of a top-down view of the boat. Yeah. Uh, Doctor, what did you think of uh, what Matthew said about the boat? Hogwash, yes? I, I have to assume he has given us a line. That is that is just something that they put into people's heads to make them think that there's something special. It's a boat. It's modern. You can look around. Our room did not smell like fish or rotten wood. Did yours? Not at all. And I can't imagine a boat of something like that would even float. That sounds absurd. And Matthew, yeah. he, he said he was only working here for a week. So does he really know? Yeah, it's like something they, they tell new crew members to just to, to mess with them, you know? That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, he said we have to fiddle with these knobs to get down. Do you yes. do you want to try something? Yes, yes, I'll do it. And he grabs them, he just, like, twists one, like, randomly and <laughs> sees what it does. All right, so that one uh, it, uh, basically makes the, um, the balloon go higher. No. <laughs> Wrong one, uh, wrong one. Uh, yeah. I believe that was the wrong one. Yes, well, then it must be this one. I'll twist the other one. And so that one uh, makes the balloon start dropping, but you notice you still have the other one on. So what it does, it just keeps the balloon in the same spot. Oh, I'll still leave me. Yes, and I'll turn down the the, the up. Okay, <laughs> then it starts coming down. Uh, it starts coming down slowly. Uh, I believe you've uh, discovered the magic key there, sir. I think so. I think I got it right. I wonder if there's any fishing on this boat. I don't suppose they have any fishing on cruise boats, do they? Uh, I believe I don't know, sir, but it seems like the boat might be traveling too fast to do any fishing from. Yes, that's unfortunate. I uh, I brought my harpoon from home. I wanted to uh, kill a marlin in, with my bare hands. Oh well, you know uh, that young filly might want to see your harpoon later. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. There's semen and no harpoons. I know. <laughs> so, uh, are you having that conversation as you uh, dock, or are you just having that on the way down? Basically, or? yeah. Okay. On the way down. On the way down, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, um, so Tony, uh, when you talk about fishing, now that he's latching you back up with the rope, he's like, uh, uh, yeah, we do fly fishing. Uh, well, we do it for sharks. Oh, interesting. I was on the hunt for a marlin, but a shark would do nicely. And uh, can we take, can do, what do you do with the shark when we catch them? Well, I don't know. We haven't caught them yet. We just started. I would be interested in uh, seeing this little sport go on. How about yourself, Mr. Langston? Oh, indeed. Yes. Uh, where do we find this fly fishing, uh, just, sir? We're going to do it off the back of the boat. Uh, and he looks up at the, he's like, oh, it's getting dark. Probably not tonight. Uh, but, you know, every hour we load, we just, we just uh, load down uh we just load down a bunch of uh what do you call that stuff the the engineer chum? A chum? yes we throw the chum um and then there's a there's a viewing uh there's a viewing uh room down at the bottom of the boat you get it you can see into the ocean you see the sharks a viewing room at the bottom of the boat and what else do they do in this viewing room well we view all the sharks that's what we're going to do uh they, they 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 throw in that chum a few times a day hmm. interesting yeah, we got lots of activities here. You guys, are good. you guys, uh, you old, you. Oh, I mean, you young men are gonna have a great time here. We got, we got kite fighting, uh, we got obstacle golf, uh, we got all sorts of things. We got fencing matches. Uh, the, oh, the ping pong tournament's gonna be tomorrow. That's gonna be that's gonna be a doozy. Um, we got bingo, but I'm gonna tell you right now, it's extremely rigged. Rigged in what way, sir? Uh, just, uh, I don't know. It seems like the same people always win. Um, and then we always, uh, and we have a wine tasting contest too. So. A contest to see how much wine we can taste? I'm down for that one, sir. <laughs> yeah, so we got, uh, this, we got, we got lots planned in this, uh, this seven days. Indeed, I've got to say, it's a bit, uh, a bit overwhelming, all of it. Yeah, well, they say, uh, you know, you get to enjoy it for a lifetime. I don't know why they keep saying that, but. Enjoyed for a lifetime, eh? Hmm. That's a that's a strange uh, bit of marketing there. Yeah, I mean, I, I I looked at it as like have fun till you die. You know what I mean? Sure. I think so too. All right, be careful going down the rope ladder. Yes. Yes. 
And then uh, we'll take it back up to Esteban. Um, so after after Matthew shows you the bridge, he's like, uh, oh, we're right near it. Let's go to, um, I'm just going to call it the gift shop. Not that long name, the axe throwing, all of that. So, but you want to see the gift shop? We could, uh, um, I've only been in there a couple of times. So the, is the gift shop like connected with the axe throwing place or is it all like one big place or is it like separated? It's like, it's all like, uh, um, it's like, it's so in the front you have the gift shop and then there's like a, um, like a doorway that they, they just pull a curtain across that leads mm-hmm. into the, the nightclub part of it. And then off to the side, there's like an axe throwing thing, which is your traditional axe throwing. Like, you know, here's targets and you're just throwing axes. Yeah. So they, it's like they took this spa- this space and did all three of these in one space, but the okay. door. But when you walk in from the outside of the bridge, you're you're into the gift shop first before you can you know. Yeah. Okay. So as we're like walking through, uh, we're not really like stopping at anything. Just kind of like observing here and then, skimming through everything, and uh, I'm just gonna be chatting with Matthew. Um, with all these attractions, I was hoping they might have had a trampoline. Well, that's something I could jump on board with. Um, I think you need a drink, Esteban. Um, we'll get you one later. Um, but look, this is pretty cool. This is the this is the model of the ship, and in, inside a large glass case, there is a um, there's a, a scale model of uh, the the Sea Star itself. Ooh. So like um. Of course, like the story was that it's built like the new like parts were built over the old parts. Um, was it like the skeleton of the ship, or was it like almost completely one for one of the old ship? Uh, well, Matthew doesn't know all the details about that. He just told oh, okay. you what he knows. But next to uh, this model is a um, a model of the ice hauler Zenobia. And looking oh. at them side by side, the Zenobia looks like it's uh, it, it looks it's. It looks smaller, but um, and, and I mean, it's just it, it, the, the cruise liner just looks so large. Yeah. But um, it, it has a this gift shop has like a a, a model of both inside a glass case. Um, and you see that with the model of the Sea Star, it's like a um, it's uh, the Sea Star is like basically cut open, so you can see the interior. And yeah. so you see, it has several decks. It has a first class deck. It has a second class deck. It has a third class. Um, has crew cabins are there next to the third class of as well and the decks are numbered so like the you know the um the crew one is deck 14 that's the one where they invited to you later is deck 14 which the numbers are not necessarily floors so when you think of a ship it's not these aren't floors of a ship you have different sections of a ship and so so uh deck 14 is this one section um and sometimes they extend they're all out but it's not necessarily that that's like a floor like there's 14 floors it's not it's not necessarily like that so deck 14 is actually uh um is is right below the deck on the top basically um so and then uh and then you can see that decks 13 and 12 it has like a little curtain that's around them so you actually can't see decks 13 and 12 and then uh and then below that you can see uh it looks like this. Um, that it, it goes back to it goes back to the like, decks uh, that are below twelve and thirteen, and mm-hmm. then it has like the engine room. It has the bilge. It has the, you can see that the underwater viewing room is there, and so this is uh, you've seen now that you've seen this. You can see there are, there is a set of staircases that go straight down um, from uh, basically on one side of each uh, funnel. So when you're in a funnel, the, the that part of the ship has a has a stairway that goes all the way down, and then the other funnel has another stairway that goes all the way down. And this is what you see on this model, and okay. these stairways go straight down. All right. Like they they um, they you know they cross hatch. They just keep going around you know to each of the floors. Okay, so like the funnels go to each of the floors, and they can all just go straight to the very bottom. Uh, not the funnels. The funnels are the, the that's just connected to the engine room to you know put out the steam and everything else. Oh, but okay. I'm just yeah, saying sorry. where they are in relation to the to to, to uh, how far they are apart is think of the yeah. two funnels on this ship and the stairways are uh, they're just like in a straight line down from those funnels. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, sorry. I thought like the funnels had the stairways inside no, them. No, no. I was no I my was bad. <laughs> no, my bad. Right. I'm just trying to give you a um, size approximation how far the stairways are apart. 
Yeah. So one um, one almost goes straight down the middle, and one's more toward the back of the ship. You can remember yeah. it that way too. So. <laughs> All right. So Esteban is kind of like gawking at this and kind of like marveling at you know how human engineering can create such a huge useless place. <laughs> um, and he's gonna look down at like the uh, viewing room, and he's gonna turn to Matthew. Like, do you know if the viewing room has any beds? Because I would like to sleep with the fishes sometimes. Um, well, we don't ha- actually have fish down. Oh, I see what you did there. Um, uh, uh, but no, it doesn't have any. It doesn't have any beds down there. <laughs> That's a shame. But uh, you can feel free to shop. We have more stuff in the gift shop. Do I look like I have money on me? Um. I'm not going to answer that, Mr. Mr. Esteban. Um, but m- maybe I'll get you a, um, a, 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 t- a sweatshirt or a T-shirt before you leave. And you can see behind you they have commemorative sweatshirts and T-shirts <laughs> that say that you know that says the Sea Star on it. God damn it! Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> that's just a good pun. All so, right. Um, okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'll like accept one of the shirts. Doesn't mean I'm gonna wear it, but <laughs> uh, no. I'll before we leave, I'll, I'll have it delivered to your room before our voyage is over. Yeah. So. All right, and uh, right before uh, you know, or right after he says that, and then I'm gonna turn on him. Well, then I guess uh, I, I still need to ask you a question, and then he like Esteban's gonna be looking towards like the axe throwing room. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he then, seems to kind of ignore your <laughs> repeated puns. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, basically, I'm just saying, like, you want to go throw some axes while we're here? Uh, actually, I can't partake of the games. Uh, I'm, I'm only meant to escort you. Um, I will see you if you come by tonight. I'm going to go, and he starts walking off. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go throw an axe. Okay. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the bounds gonna go for an X. Okay, go ahead and make a. Uh, make a D twenty. Yeah. Make a make a, fingers. Make, a <laughs> dex, oh, make a dexterity check. Go oh, ahead and roll it. Yep. Oh, sorry, my cat's like moving here. Well, uh, what will seventeen do? Uh, yeah, you see, you are surprisingly pretty good throwing an axe. It goes right into the. I mean, the axe throwing place is not in the gift shop. It's like a range that's set up. Yeah. So if you miss, it's not like it's gonna like hit the side of the hit it, go through the wall or anything like that. Okay. Yeah, but if you dropped it, you could take a foot off. <laughs> no, I've actually been to an axe throwing room, and those the axes can bounce. They have surprisingly high bounce rate. <laughs> I saw somebody throw one once, and it got stuck opposite into the wood it wasn't the blade that stuck into the target it was the back of the axe oh yeah that's that's no that's impressive and i'm like no thank you (laughs) i like to loom (laughs) yeah all right but yeah yeah so i'm just gonna like throw axes all right (laughs) yeah all right so we'll go back down to um annabelle um so let's just set this now to kind of fast forward in time a little bit it is now (laughs) nighttime it is now nighttime um you can uh, you can get dinner through room service. Uh, they do have uh, like basically self serve uh, buffets set up at different parts of the ship if you want to get food that way. Um, however, you want to get food is is fine. But um, going back to Annabelle, are you just staying here in the lounge or? No, after a while she'd want to kind of escape because no offense, Caroline, but you're a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when it's so- well, so when it's night uh, time out, uh, Caroline uh, takes um, takes um, Kim. And says, "Oh, well, let's run along now." And uh, as she leaves, uh, some um, a couple individuals, just as you know, just as you're backing up to leave, they come in with boxes of donuts, and they uh, set up like a slide projector on a table, and they're kind of like angling it. They have a like a roll roll in uh, um, slide like projector screen that they're pulling down, um, and then it has. Uh, um, they, the one, once they turn it on, you can see that it's. Uh, um, they're setting up a presentation of some sort. It says Life Society, and it says it has this picture of like a. It's a, a weird picture. It's like a, there's a beach, but there's a doorway that's sitting in the middle of the beach, and it's open, and uh, you can see the light on the other side of the doorway, and then it just has words that say, "Is uh, is death really the end?" And um, okay, uh, Annabelle is going to get up now, 
And she actually is going to go find the two older gentlemen he had sent and tell them <laughs> not to go to that presentation because it sounds like a cult. <laughs> she's going to be like, um, you value your sanity. So she would probably go look for them because she's like, they seem like nice guys. I don't want them to be subjected to that insanity. <laughs> okay. Um, ooh. I'm sorry, I'm rolling two different dice here. All right, so you, as you walk um, out of the lounge, uh, Annabelle, as you're looking around, you, there's a buzz about this presentation, and um, there are about 25 people that are making their way to the presentation. Uh, they're going to pack that lounge, and so. Um, but I'll, I'll do, well, where are you two at, um, you older gentlemen? Hmm. We probably went and got some something to eat. Okay. Sure. We're we're eating steaks at the uh, in the <laughs> barbecue at the buffet. <laughs> Roger did want to go to that life society thing though, so uh, I would probably be making my way down there when it when it's like time to start. But yeah, we would be eating or whatever and having a drink. Okay. Uh, so we'll say that uh, we'll say that Annabelle finds you. Um, so look, and so Annabelle, turn oh. over to you. <laughs> well, hello there, Annabelle. Annabelle. Yes, it's Annabelle. Um. Were you two planning on going to that life thing? And I'll look over at Doctor. I Are heard you? there was gonna be some beignets there. Uh, no, there, there's really <laughs> greasy looking donuts, but um, I think they might be insane. It's what like, makes you say that? It strikes me as very cultish. A cult on a cruise ship. My, my lady. The entire presentation is about whether or not you're going to continue to remain after you die. Well, that is a question that all men want to answer, especially at my age. Uh, not really, once you're dead, you're dead. Oh, I see. That's a, <laughs> that is a darker perspective. I work in retail. Ah. And that explains why you have the darker perspective. But you know, through <laughs> the centuries, many have uh, sought to extend their lives. The Egyptian pharaohs, they would, uh, you know, uh, take out the body parts of their dead and put them with them, bury them with their slaves and their cats so that they had people to serve them in the afterlife. Many oh, cultures no. believe that there is something after death. Well, if you choose to go, don't eat the donuts. They didn't look good. <laughs> well, that is surely disappointing. <laughs> it, well, where the... Uh, yeah, just... Mm. She's like, that entire lounge was just weird. <laughs> well, this has only piqued my interest even more, so I'm, uh, I'll be looking forward to going. Well, <laughs> I'm interested in what they have to say as a study of people. Uh, well, enjoy being there with Esteban. Now you're uh, going to come along as well, Annabelle, aren't you? Come on now. What else are you going to do? Play bingo? Who else do you know on the ship? Come with us. We've got nothing else to do. Fine, as long as we sit by the door. And everybody eats a donut. Oh, no, I'm not eating this one. Hmm. <laughs> we'll see. Go ahead, Adam. I was going to say, we'll see about that. Where, where's that strange fellow that we uh, saw earlier? The man with the uh, the poor shoes. I haven't seen him in uh, a couple of hours. Last His I thought, was... he was walking off with Matthew. Stefan or something like that, right? Esteban. Estefan. Estef. Estefan. Esteban, like Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. Hey, pardon me? <laughs> Oh, wait, you probably haven't seen that TV show. <laughs> I do not partake in the television very often. It's Disney Channel. <laughs> the Disney Channel? No, ma'am. You must have children at home. Is that the case? It uh, was on when I was a kid. I was never blessed with children. So I did not partake in the Disney Channel. I was a child who watched the Disney Channel. <laughs> I see, I see. Well, well, yes, es, Esteban, 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 Esteban. Okay, that went down the wrong way. <laughs> so, uh, Esteban, are you uh, walking in to get some food and you see them, or are you guys trying to meet up with Esteban? Oh, uh, I was going to say, like, 
as they're like walking towards the room and like they enter, they already see Esteban sitting down eating one of the donuts. <laughs> 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 no, he's, nice. got, he's got a plate of like five donuts. Yeah. <laughs> there he is all along. There he is. Esteban has all the donuts. <laughs> Esteban, are you saving those for us? Uh, for who? For us. You saving those? You saving those donuts for us? It seems like you got enough to feed a small, uh, a small little crew there. I mean, they were free. You want some? Um. Well, well, yeah. Are you gonna eat all of those? I was planning to. Oh, well, if that's the case, we'll go get our own. If we well, you know, to. plans change. That that is true. Esteban, have you been drinking again this afternoon? Only water. Hmm. So you hear a little. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. <laughs> on, okay, we're, um, everyone, everyone, we are going to get started, if that is okay with everyone. Um, so there's like the, um, there's just a general um, kind of moving around and then everyone quiets down. And then at the front of the, um, um, at the front of the, of the room is a, is a woman. She's, she's dressed leisurely, but at the same time, if, if you can imagine a businesswoman that is trying to relax, that's what she looks like. And then standing next to her is a um, um, is a young man that uh, well, he let's let, let's just let's just say the way he looks is he looks fresh scrubbed. He looks like he's the type of person that would have one meaning exactly one meaningful tattoo, and that they probably play guitar. That's what he looks like. So however you imagine that, that's that's what he looks like. Right. So, and, and while, so while like the bell was ringing, they're like, trying to introduce themselves. I'm I'm like, kind of like tilting the plate towards them if they want to grab a donut. Kind of like, like, hey, you want to grab one or? Portal of us? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it's just like, I'll take one. Roger takes one. Annabelle was just like, I don't know when the last time he washed his hands is. She wouldn't say it out loud, but she's oh, like, okay. <laughs> she's like, oh, thank you. She's like, oh, thank you, because she's like, I don't know how clean his hands are dressing by the rest of them. I'm gonna right. pick up I'm gonna pick up a napkin and grab one of them. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and I'm like as they're like like leaning in to like grab one, I'm gonna like whisper to them, sorry about the long pauses. I was trying to be a bit punny, but I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> He that pedals the pun picks the pocket. <laughs> hey, uh, your speech I've never heard. I'm back there. Can if you wouldn't mind keeping it down, uh, we are going to get started. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Oh, absolutely. Okay. So you see, uh, you see about twenty-five, nearly thirty people sitting in front of you because you guys said you're sitting in the back by the door, and. Uh, you know, they are all uh, drinking coffee, eating donuts. They all, uh, um, some of them are sunburned. They, they appear like they've had a, they seem like, they seem that in that relaxed state of those that are on vacation that have been having a great time. Um, and now they're sitting there um, listening to this presentation. Like, well, one person pipes up real fast and just says, uh, hey, are, is, are, this isn't a timeshare thing, is it? And then uh, and then the person in the room, uh, in the front, the, the, the woman goes, no, no. It is not a timeshare, I assure you. And in fact, the coffee and the donuts are for you. If you want to take them to go, you're more than welcome. Um, but we would just like to talk to you a little bit um, about the Life Society and our mission. Um, you know, see, back when I was working with uh, Dr. Walter, she kind of looks around the room and then no one says anything. Uh, it. Who? And then she keeps on talking and she's like... A, uh, Esteban's going to raise his hand. Um, uh, I haven't made a point yet, but okay, what's your question, sir? Well, not really a question, but I think you lied to us because we are sharing our time. Oh, oh, that's that's very, that's brilliant. Um, <laughs> anyhow, um, did Devin, do you want to? Yeah. And so Devin kind of just moves over closer to your guys' group. You've already met him. He's like, oh, and he just kind of gives her like this wink. Like, they're good. 
you know, they're good, like a thumb up. Um, and then so she goes, well, anyways, let's start the presentation. So I would like to talk to you today about um, mental health and wellness. You see, we are on the, the Sea Star to have a great time. And um, those of you who have been to the athletic club, I'm sure have worked out your bodies. But have you really worked out your mind? And that's what I'd like to talk to you about today. Um, how long are you guys sitting here listening to, to this? I'm already bored. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable being here, so. I'd probably wait until I see sort of what they're about. Okay. Before I left. So she keeps on talking. She's like, you know, I, and so, she, you know, kind of all you guys are having that little side conversation, just picking right up. She's like, uh, we've learned that the mind is very powerful. Um, see, back when I was doing work with uh, Catherine Cepeda. Um, okay. Uh, well, when I was doing work with her, we, uh, you know, we, we discovered that the mind is uh, more powerful than any muscle you have in your body. In fact, you, you can grow your mind. And she's just going on and on and on. Um, a couple of people were starting to a romance novelist. <laughs> a couple of people were starting to kind of like nod off, and then um, and then after um, after a bit, she's like, "Devin, uh, why don't you uh, get it?" And so she, Devin, goes uh, behind some of the books and he pulls out a, um, it's a, uh, um, it's a sistrum. It's like a thing that's a like a little rattle, you know. Um, and she's like, "Like this. This is a. This is something that." can calm your mind and Devin, give a demonstration. And he starts going. And so the a couple of people in the front row kind of perk up at that. They're kind of looking at him. And so, and this is just one of many demonstrations that we can teach you and show you on how to expand your mind. And once you expand your mind, you're able to open it up to new possibilities. Um, uh, back years ago when I was working with uh, Dr. Cleaver, she looks around the room again, and she and then she moves on. Okay, well, when I was working with Dr. Cleaver, we discovered, and she goes into her next point. She uh, seems I'm, to have worked with everybody in the book. Um, what do you guys want to do? Are you staying for the rest of the presentation? Is is this like a Q and A? Like, is there any like any back and forth, or is this them just kind of like? Speaking. Speaking. They're speaking about their society and speaking about, right now she's in the research part of her presentation talking about what she has discovered. Uh, I, I guess I'll look at these guys. Is anybody else interested in this? Absolutely not. It is quite fascinating. I have seen uh, tribes in the uh, the southern reaches of the Africas where uh, they have used similar type devices as uh, meditation trances, you know, things like that. So they, they shake the little thing and they get everybody in a, in a frenzy and then they uh, go and do whatever they need to be to get done. But I mean, I've heard nothing here that sounds extraordinary. Sounds like a bunch of uh, mumbo jumbo to me. Uh, what about you, Esteban? Well, I don't really have much ghosts going for me, so I'm going to stay and see what they have to offer. Well, all right. Uh, Annabelle and Doctor, are we headed out or are you going to stay? I, uh, I hope we leave. Yeah, this I'm looking for some action. This is this is terribly boring. Uh, and then at that time, looking at your watch, it is uh, nearly six o'clock. And you have uh, you were had a meeting with Svetlana. In fact, uh, I have a I have a date. Uh, I will I will catch up with you all uh, a bit later. Are you guys all going to go to that crew party down at the uh, in Steerage? Or I mean, yeah. whatever level? It's, it's possible. It's possible. It's, I have not yet made up my mind. It's uh, deck fourteen. If you don't remember, I believe that's what Matthew said. That's it. Well, I will be there at deck fourteen. If all, all of you come along, I will see you there a little bit later. Yeah, I I'll... think I will go uh, slip off and uh, have a drink. Annabelle, you want to uh, to come to the bar with me? I would love a drink. Well, I'll let you guys know if there's anything interesting here. All right. Um, so you guys uh, go off to the bar. Uh, we'll meet you and then uh, in a, in a, in a moment. Um, uh, Esteban. So after after they walk out within within five ten minutes. Oh, but within five, 10 minutes, uh, the conversation shifts, shifts and um, this woman's name, she does reveal her name to be Elizabeth. And mm -hmm. she says, uh, Devin, um, it's time. 
give them a give them some more and so he uh, starts to shake the rattle mm-hmm. some more and it starts yeah. to get it starts to get a more rhythmic pattern going yeah did oh, you um yeah i i forgot to say but like uh when they like start to leave i do pull out my uh my rubik's cube and i'm like uh I fiddle with it as I'm like listening to the presentation. So are you having trying to have your mind on the Rubik's cube? Yeah, kind of like just fiddling with it while like kind of uh, trying to like listen to like the important parts of this. Like, okay. Because like I've Esteban's been through many of these kinds of like oh we can improve your life speeches and all that. Um, so he's just trying to listen to what they're gonna offer. Like, so he's he kind of like knows when to. Listen for it. So he's like focusing on the Rubik's cube. Okay. Um, so the talking is uh, pretty much stopped as Devin is now shaking, um, shaking this uh, this tool, this rattle, mm-hmm. and it, it gets more rhythmic um, and um, and rhythmic. And um, Elizabeth says, um, "I'd like you all to close your eyes. Close them now, please." And when she says that, Esteban, you have a strong feeling of your eyes drooping. Okay. And she goes, uh, listen for the sound. Become one with the rhythm. And then uh, Devin starts shaking it uh, faster and then slower. And then in this, uh, and, and then again, this rhythmic pattern. And Esteban, in your mind, it, it, it's, it's like you're filled with the sound of it. It's in front of you. It's behind you. It's pretty much all around you. It's starting to encompass you. Are you trying to still focus on your Rubik's Cube? Yeah, like my eyes are drooping. And I, I would think Esteban's kind of like, rocking back and forth kind of like matching the rhythm with his body mm-hmm. but his mind is like he's like focusing on turning like the uh like what do they call like the sides of the rubik's cube to try to like match yeah. but it's really hard because like this rubik's cube is already well worn that some like the colors are fading so it's kind of <laughs> difficult to tell unless he's focusing very hard especially at his old age okay yeah um, so he, um, it, the, 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 um, that shaking keeps getting, uh, um, it, it keeps, it's almost incessant. Now she's not talking at all. And she says, I'm going to count down from five. And when I reach one, your eyes will be closed and you will sleep. And the, ryth- and the rhythm is shaking five, four, three, two, and and so Esteban, you are asleep. Okay. And the when rhythm you got him. <laughs> yeah. Um, and when like Gloria, you... <laughs> I feel justified in all of my suspicions. <laughs> Gloria, Gloria Esteban, the rhythm, the rhythm came and got him. <laughs> <laughs> it is mine. It's oh my God. <laughs> it, is, it is mine. Esteban's thinking maybe I should have left, but I guess that ship has sailed. <laughs> he even puns in his sleep. <laughs> so we'll move up to uh, we'll, we'll we'll get back to Esteban shortly. We move, move up to the bar, and then um, as you as you three walk in, uh, you get there first, uh, Roger. But um, there is um, there is Svetlana at the bar. Um, it looks like she's drinking really red wine at the bar, and she's uh, and she's yes. like. Yeah, when she, yeah, and when she she she's at a physician in such a way that she can see when you walk walks in, and she's just like it looks it should look depressed, but it's like she's sipping the wine. But then when she sees you, her eyes get really white. She's like, ah, Roger. Ah yes, uh, hello there, Svetlana. Uh, are you having a what is that a Pinot Noir or something? Yes, of the finest. Yes, yes. Uh, we'll all have something of the same. Um, and she just kind of, um, she just like nods to the waiter and, uh, Pino. And so he said, uh, he brings you over some wine. Um, and she said, you can leave the bottle. And uh, she's like, I'm so happy you came. And as you can see her, uh, um, 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 she's very beautiful. Um, and her, you know, like her skin looks immaculate again. She has this, uh, you can't tell her age. You can't tell again if she's in, in her thirties, if she's in her early fifties and just really takes care of herself that you just, you can't guess. So Svetlana, uh, what do you do for a living? I'm re- well. Let's say I'm retired from working. 
Oh, I see. You're uh, well. You seem very young to, for retirement. Are you? I'm not retirement. I don't mean retired like that, dear. Um, I, I just mean I um, have reached a point in my life where I don't no longer have to work. Um, I've come into some money. But enough about me. What about you? And she kind of grabs your bicep. She grabs onto your arm. She's uh -oh. like, what brings you here? Yes, well, I'm uh, looking for uh, a new adventure. And I, uh, we, we all won tickets here, right? Is that right? We all won in? Uh, no, no, that was we Esteban. We dining at the captain's table. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. The rest no. of us paid. No, no, okay. except for Esteban. He won a ticket. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, yes, yeah, so I was just looking for an adventure, and I heard about this uh, this ship, and, uh, well, the marketing was intriguing. Lived like a god for a few days. Yeah, I, I like that line as well. Uh, you see, yes. that, yeah, I'm, I, I didn't know what to expect when I came here. I, um... I didn't know I was going to meet someone as handsome as you. Ah, yes. Well, uh, <laughs> you were just saying that. Uh, tell me now, uh, our, our cabin boy said that uh, there was a ship within a ship here, some uh, some boat called the Zenobia. You know anything about that? Oh, the Zenobia? Yes. Oh, uh, that's just a fable. That's not. They, they took part of the bow. You know, it's more commemorative. If you go up to the bridge, you can see the original wheel. That's it's a, it's a touristy thing. I see. Now, are you a crew here? Are you here on leisure? Uh, uh, no, I just know the I know the owners. Oh yes. Yeah, so oh, they seem very. Um, oh, well, I don't know anything about them. In fact, uh, who who are the owners? Uh, well, maybe we'll meet them later. Um, I, I'd like to give you a, uh, an invite. Tomorrow night, it's an exclusive invite. You you cannot come unless you are invited. And um, you see, we're going to have a ball. It's going to be oh. a formal ball. Ah, oh, yes. yes. Did, did you bring a suit? Uh, of course I did. I bought. I brought a tuxedo, in fact. Oh, that's... Oh, I bet you look so handsome in, in a tuxedo. Uh, yes, but, I, I do try. Yeah. And she kind of looks you up and down, and you can tell she's trying to imagine what you look like. And she just like again, her eyes are all bright. I mean, she's you know very into you, and uh, and she's like, "Well, you'll be my guest. You'll be my plus one." Yes, perfect. Yeah. I'll consider the date. Yeah, it's tomorrow night. It's uh, um, I, you have to stop by. Uh, um, you have to stop by. Well, stop by here so I can uh, tell you how to get there. So you can see, it's on a it's on a deck that's not open to the public. Well, would I be able to bring uh, perhaps some of my friends? Uh, well, they have to be invited too. Um, perhaps, perhaps, maybe after I meet them. All right. Um, are they are they in the room somewhere? Do I see them? Then uh, there they walk in. And I'd be like, well, in fact, and I'll I'll like flag them down, the doctor Annabelle. Uh, Annabelle. Annabelle's just like that. You asked him on a date. Good job, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> come, come! I like yelling over the room. Uh, I'm gonna walk up and order at the bar, and there you gonna introduce me to your lady friends. Why, well, yes, uh, this is my friend Svetlana, and Svetlana, this is uh, my friend Dr. Orville Wittenberger. He's a, a former archaeologist, and uh, written, and Annabelle written Ross with an R. Oh, written, written oh, with an R sound. Uh, it says, it's spelled with a W, but it is Rittenberger. <laughs> Rittenberger. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Okay. Sorry, yeah, old, old friend. And uh, Annabelle is a uh, retail worker, and she, uh, yes, she is joining us from, uh, from, from there. So this is my friend Svetlana. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, the pleasure is mine, dear. You are, you are as pretty as a peach, young lady. Oh, thank you. But you see, I'm um, I'm already taken, and she grabs onto your arm again, Roger. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. And he try and tries to roll with it. Um, and so, uh, walking up to um, to your party is a um, it's a woman that she appears to be in her probably in her fifties, maybe early sixties. She has a smoking jacket on, um, which which uh, strikes you probably older gentlemen. People don't normally wear these anymore, but she has one on, and and. Uh, and and she walks up and um, she she actually walks up to you, um, um, Orville, and she's like, um, "You, sir, have a very scholarly demeanor about you. What may I ask you do?" 
Well, I'm retired at this point, but before that, I was a, an archaeologist, an explorer of sorts, traveling the world to, uh, to find hidden treasures. Oh, wow. And you, my dear, look like a hidden treasure. Oh. 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 He's so charming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, oh dear. Uh, my name's Willow. Uh, Willow Pagan. Willow, like the tree. Uh, Willa Pitkin. Willa. Oh, yeah. yes. Well, young Willa, we're, we're just sitting down to have a drink. Would you like to join us? Um, sure. Um, Svetlana, can, uh, that looks really good. Can I have uh, one of those? Oh, would you, you know Svetlana over here. Yes, yes. We know the owners of this establishment. Oh, fantastic. Yes, we were uh, talking to our deckhand about the owners. They're apparently very mysterious. Oh, yes, they do. Uh, they, oh, they sleep all day. They, they, yeah, they like to party. I see, I see. Uh, we heard about some parties below deck, actually. Uh, perhaps they uh, like to join those, yes? Oh, you'd like to come to the, to the formal ball? A ball? I, oh, I don't know anything about do you, a ball. Do you have uh, do you have fine fine clothes? I have, uh, of course. Oh. Our gentleman is never without the proper apparel. Well, bring your knowledge of your field. I'm sure you'll strike us some interesting conversations. But that's tomorrow night, dear. Tomorrow? Oh, that sounds quite interesting. Um, and then at that moment, there's a uh, um, you see. Some of the crew members, uh, you know, they're they're kind of huddling in a, um, um, they are like huddling in a corner. They seem to be whispering to each, to each other, and uh, they are they are like 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 uh, like this hurried whispering, and then they go, "Come on, come on!" and they start running off like there's like as if there's some like they're like they're, 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 as if there's something they have to attend to, and they're just running out of the bar. You just notice that as you guys are talking. Who started running off? Just people that are <laughs> employees. Three crew members. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And we're like, well, that was a little odd. Now, um, Svetlana, do you know anything about uh, this life society? Um, yeah, I, I, well, I heard from my friends. Uh, they were a little low on ticket sales, and the life society was willing to to, to buy them in bulk. And so, um, well, yeah, uh, buy your friends. Uh, well, buy the tickets. Buy the. They bought. They bought some tickets. We we. We, we actually had some trouble selling all the tickets. You know, maybe I think it was just a lack of advertising, honestly. You know, there's such stiff competition. I, I We found, uh, I say I say we, it's not we, I just know them. Uh, they, they, had, uh, they had trouble selling all the tickets. I'm sure they wouldn't want to admit that. Yes, I see. Well, we had just come from their seminar, and I uh, have to tell you it was uh, quite dry. Uh, well, I don't know much about them other than that. Other than they, uh, they bought up all the tickets to fill up the ship. They strike me as new age loonies. It was a bit of that, yes. Yes, there was some uh, travel rituals going on as well, with some shaking and some uh, rattling. Yeah, I wouldn't know anything about that. So. Hmm. Of course not, my dear. Of course not. <laughs> Well, are there any uh, sites that we should uh, happen to, uh, to take in while we're here on the ship? Um, well, what are you in the mood for? There's uh, uh, there's the gift shop. There's uh, there's some axe throwing. There's uh, the viewing yes. port. The viewing yes, port yes, down yes, below. Yes. I, I'm, not, I'm not interested in the commercial aspects of this stuff. Actually, I was a bit interested in uh, some fishing. Is there any uh, is there any time that the boat's actually going to stop? That I could maybe like I don't know, take a dip in the water or go fishing or something of that sort. Uh, yes, I do believe that tomorrow at some point in the afternoon they're going to stop. Ah, perfect. All right. Well, yeah, they, uh, they, we have some uh, crazy individuals on board that seem to think they can uh, zip line a shark. Yeah, I've heard something strange about that. Now, are there any zip other... Line any a other... shark? <laughs> <laughs> zip line a shark? Uh, well, what do you call it when you fish out a shark on a, on a fishing line? To hook, to hook a shark? Sure. Sure. That seems ill-advised. I was more wondering if there's any other activities here that maybe are uh, not 
not well known by all the other, uh, something more exclusive, perhaps. Well, that's what you're invited to tomorrow, dear. Well, all right. Nobody really knows about that one, and I actually... Question. Was this invitation only issued to the gentleman? <laughs> you are, you are, as they say, a fifth wheel, madame. Oh, well, I'm, no, I'm acting as, I'm asking you to play, not character. Oh, uh, well, uh, well, Willa Pitkin seemed to be inviting to anybody that, to your party that wanted to go. So, yeah, you could go if you're along with the two gentlemen. Um, okay. And she's there now. She's like, and she did ask Orville if he has fine clothes, but she looks over at you and she's like, oh, how about you, uh, dear? Do you have some fine clothes, some formal wear? I have a cocktail dress. Hmm, that'll do. That'll do. And she kind of gives you like a, she like, looks back and looks, you, know, you have a dance. that'll do nicely. That'll do nicely. She's like, thank you. I, I, I thank you. <laughs> <laughs> This is so creepy. I feel like I'm in a meat market and not I meat. do feel like I'm in a meat market. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, let's see. So, so, so uh, Svetlana says to you, Roger, she's like, um, hey, uh, maybe we could just go somewhere more quiet. Uh, well, sure. What did, what did you have in mind? Well, I could uh, take you to one of my rooms. Oh, um, well, uh, <laughs> I, I, I suppose we could go have a drink there, sure. Sure. Um, what are you going to say to your friends? Um, uh, Dr. Orville and, uh, Annabelle, uh, I, I feel a, a little, a little tired. I might, um, uh, retire for the night here, and, uh, Svetlana is going to join me for a nightcap. Adam just smiles and says, I'm just, you, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna nod my, uh, <laughs> my cane at you. Oh, well, then I'll see you all tomorrow. Y yes, Have yes. Have a pleasant and, evening, Roger. En enjoy, enjoy putting a saddle on your filly. <laughs> Sir. Uh, <laughs> so I'll nod to them and then, uh, head out with Svetlana, I guess. Okay. And then uh, Annabelle and um, Orville, are you guys going to the crew party? Or um, it's a, I mean, we can fast forward to that in time and then we'll get back did, to this one. Did Willa leave? Yeah, she left. Okay. Annabelle right. just looks at Orville. She's like, that is a man who's getting laid. <laughs> <laughs> that is, uh, that is uh, for sure a way to put that. Yes. Uh, are you interested in that crew party later? I, I'm feeling myself a bit tired. I am, uh, I am after all, retired. <laughs> and I think it is time for me to retire. To be honest, I'm not sure, because quite frankly, it seemed like Cassie was on some kind of drugs. Yeah, I agree. I agree. He seemed a little out of it. And uh, I'm not sure I want to... Uh, I thought at first it was going to be a big party, but it sounded like it was only one or two people. And then... Um, that got even weirder, so, uh... And then he said it was between the floors, which just made it sound like a crime waiting to happen. Yeah, I did not think of it like that, but sure, sure, yes. I uh, work in retail. I have no choice but to think about the bad things that could possibly happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that is true. I'm sure you have many stories to tell. Unfortunately. Well, good night, young lady. Good night. So you guys heading back up off to your rooms? I'm going oh, to yeah. my room. Okay. Oh, yeah. I am I am going to my room because No one's going to the party. <laughs> no one is going to the party. <laughs> the only person brave enough to go to the party is you and Esteban. Well, I'm about to die, so Esteban's already been hypnotized and you've been taken off to a strange lady's room. So, yes. you know. Yeah, and as we know, I like to live. <laughs> yeah, My I last know. Two characters are proof of that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you guys, uh, you walk to the to the stairwell, and then uh, um, unfortunately, uh, Annabelle, uh, you have to part with Mister Orville because uh, he's he's in the uh, more second class um, cabins, and you have to now I'm go. Poor. He goes <laughs> up, and you have to go down. <laughs> <laughs> to third to the to the to the basic cabins um as yeah, you walk I'm, I'm <laughs> as yeah as you walk down to the um as you take that stairwell down 
um, there's a door that which uh, the, the same three crewmen that you saw um, run away from the the bar. Um, they're struggling against the door, and they're like, "No, you you go in there, go check out again." And then you you pass them as they do this, and then one of them like you know is like puts their back up against the wall, like, um, good, um, "Good evening, ma'am." Is everything all right? Uh, everything is not all right. And they're like, Fred, no, no. And they, no, everything's fine. They're covering his mouth. And they're like, uh, f- no, Fred's just, uh, he's had a rough night. It's first night working. Um, and then you hear a <laughs> against the door and they're like, uh, ma'am, you might want to run along. the definition of not all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, uh, uh, I don't, I don't know how to put it. Um, it, it, there's a crocodile behind the door. We're trying to keep it from getting out. Okay, Could, uh, you're probably what safer just moving along. Fuck! Just runs down the hallway. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I'm glad I didn't go to that party. <laughs> <laughs> so you got oh, you, you, <laughs> <laughs> so you run down to your room. <laughs> oh hell yeah! I'm out. I don't do crocodiles. I lived in Florida. All right. So when you get to the when you get to the hallway of your um um like when you get to the hallway of your room, you have uh it's I mean uh, it's well lit. Um, I would imagine that uh, um maybe this would happen in your brain. You would get like that strobe effect of like you're looking down the hallway. Then all of a sudden, it switches from this luxury cruise liner to to uh you know wooden paneled walls that are slick and wet and it smells of fish within the second the, the, the second that happens it switches right back to the cruise liner look like in your brain you know um as you're just frightened by this uh this news that they're trying to keep an out uh, a crocodile from getting out um but then walking down the hallway is uh um, there's a man he has like nine necklaces on beads some some jeweled um he's wearing no shirt um and he has uh and he just has leather pants on and he's walking, uh, yeah, he's walking toward you. And he's like, hello, hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm very uncomfortable right now. What oh is, what is your name? M, M, Bell. I'm Reggie. This is every woman's worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Reggie Pullman. You have nothing to fear from me, darling. I just wanted to introduce myself. And then he's like, excuse me, I know it's a narrow hallway. And he kind of like goes up and then just scoots along and then moves around you. I would push myself up against the opposite wall because that is just creepy. <laughs> that is so creepy. Was it front or back? <laughs> uh, walk, uh, it's walking toward her. Yeah. Oh, God. No, 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 no. Up against the wall. Pass away, sir. Yeah, so he just gives you like this, uh, looking you up and down, and then moves moves along. Like, I should have just gone to Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and you just go to your room and kind of go to sleep. Oh, there's no sleeping. There's a crocodile in a room somewhere. <laughs> I have a creepy ass neighbor. I am going to be extremely tired in the morning. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there's no sleeping for me. All right, so. Uh, so the animal goes into a room, and uh, um, Orville, you also uh, go out for the night. Um, Esteban, you wake up, and uh, you wake up in a long dark robe, and you are on the top bunk of uh, in a room, and the room's pretty well lit. And as you kind of edge up on your elbows and you look out, you can see that there are um, probably about four rows of bunks that, are, that extend probably probably about four to five deep of bunk beds. And as you look out, uh, everyone in the bunk, bunk beds are laying on their back with um, with um, uh, with a red robe on. And then there's just a, still that rattling sound that's happening throughout the room. You're, you're, no, you're no longer in the lounge. You don't know how you got here. Um, and uh, what you hear is uh, everyone kind of starts sitting up together, including yourself. And uh, they say, um, um, it's time. And uh, I'll uh, when we uh, when we play next time, I'll talk about talk to you about some of the <laughs> some of the actions yeah. you can take. <laughs> um, but they say it's time, and then uh, the 
going back to Roger, uh, Roger, it is uh, you, your room actually has a um, has a port window, mm-hmm. and the sunlight is shining through it. Just the sunrise is shining through the port window, and you have no idea how you got back to your room as it comes in the morning time. Um, as you scratch at your um, as you scratch at your uh, neck though, because you got an itch here, um, and you go over to the mirror, you can see you have two small like puncture wounds there. Um, and then you have this overwhelming desire that you that you want to see Svetlana. And you're like, what happened? Oh, I must have drank too much. Um, but you have this desire that you just, you can't wait to, you can't wait to see her again. Oh, um, a thrall. <laughs> and that's where we will, uh, that's where we will end uh, Vampire Cruise for tonight. Um, next time, uh, um, next time is day two. And uh, we'll see what, uh, <laughs> what, what's it, what's uh entail for our uh, for our player characters um thank you for joining us and uh, we um we'll see you next time yeah we'll see if Anadol gets chased by a creep in leather pants (laughs) oh yeah bye everyone